and it's time to say hi to Tom. How are you, man? Hey, good morning, Eddie. It, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and and we're 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 excited. We're sitting here. We're bouncing off the wall, and. We're ready to get going. You know, it's at, at AD&D, I guess. You know, they would say, somebody would tell me, well, that Tom Young has AD&D, you know. He's always so excited and so enthusiastic and ready to go. It, it's Dungeons and Dragons player, are you? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you know, it is, life is too short to be negative. You know, you got to spend your day and you got to look for the flowers and the roses and the, and the good things that are all around each and every one of us well, okay. well, every day. We'll get to what you want to talk about in a second, but you just uh, got a question. How do you manage that on a daily basis? How, it, it, how much of it comes from planning and the security of planning and looking ahead? We, the, the, the secret is, is, yes, planning is important, but you have to find that, that thing, Eddie, that, that, that purpose. Each of us, you know, the, in, in life, there are two dates that are important. Okay. The, the day we were born and the day we figured out why. That's heavy. Uh, That's it, heavy. It, and, and I tell people, you know, I'll, I'll be 71 in, in what, five days. It, today's the 15th on the 20th. I'll be, I'll be 71 years old. Really? And, and, and I just, I, I feel so blessed because... I surely don't feel 71 years old. You don't look at that. I, I mean, I did an ab workout this morning and did, you know, 10, you know, 25 minutes of, of 8 or 10 ab workouts, and I do that every other day. Uh, and and it's just, I, I have to do that to to be able to chase Tom's dream. You know, when... when What's, well, explain to me chasing Tom's dream, because I have an idea what your dream is. I, I, you demonstrate I, I, it. I, I, I believe... With all of my heart, Eddie, that, that the things that I teach people are critical for their future happiness and financial success. You know, how much of that, you know, you're going to be a millionaire someday. Right. You, you may have to be to buy bread and, and <laughs> bread and milk, you know. It, it, comes it, to that, yeah. it, it, it could be that bad. But the whole idea of... of Typical financial planning, the typical thing that everybody's told to do, the, the number one ingredient in that is the four rules that follow financial institutions. It's their four rules of their success. Number one, I want all your money. I want to control all your money. I want more ongoing. I want to keep it forever. And I want to give back as little as possible. Now, you think about that, and oh, that sounds crazy, Tom. You just described an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> but, but if you think about it, what does the financial world do to make money, Eddie? They, they put money in motion. They, they, they create right. dollars in the fractional banking system. So on average, you put a dollar in the bank. On average, they create seven more dollars. Now, how would we relate to that? That's inflation, Eddie. And that started in 1972 when the Federal Reserve and the federal government, when, the, when Richard Nixon removed us from the gold standard in 1972, and it opened the door to fractional banking. Okay. That makes me think of tiny little banks. That's not what it is. is it? It, it is not. Every little bank on every street corner is connected all the way to Wall Street. I always call it the, the biggest redwood tree in the world. Mm -hmm. It sits on Wall Street. It's invisible. But the roots of that tree touch every bank in the world. It's tied to that tree. So the food and that that is coming to that tree comes from every bank in the world. Is that why people say Wall Street and Main Street are not the same economies? Well, Main, Main Street here is Main Street up right outside our window here is Main Street of Beaver Falls, right? Yeah. But there are banks on this street, right? Uh -huh. And they're tied to Wall Street. So, they're tied to Wall Street. And, and so in, in finding true financial success, you, you have to learn some things that, that are rules that my four rules, okay? The financial mastery coaching are four rules. All right. Okay, number one, you must pay yourself first. You, like must, save, you must save money, and in doing that, you learn to pay yourself 
first. I like your rules for me better than your rules for the bank already. Absolutely. I don't care what you make a year. And people say, well, why can't save any money? Well, you're upside down because you spend first and then you save if there's anything left over. And then you're chasing. If if you got a reduction in pay of 20%, yeah. you'd survive. You, you'd get along. You'd figure out how to do it. So you need to do that to yourself. You you need to give yourself a twenty percent pay cut okay. out of your out of your whatever, and and you need to start saving twenty percent. Rule number one: you must get to twenty percent of savings of your gross annual income. Can we call that the ramen hot dog? chicken pot pie spaghetti rule because that, the first thing I think in my life, 20%, uh, I'd be eating different. But, but you may, but, yeah. but I always tell people, I says, add up your credit card payment every month, right. your car payment every month, and, and the other personal loans you have. And, and in America right now, the mm-hmm. average family in America spends 34 cents, Eddie, of every dollar on interest to debt in some way. That's insane. 34 cents on every dollar goes to cover debt. That's literally a third of everything. Uh, And all you're doing, and you're not even getting ahead. You're just covering what you owe. You know, now, now, here's the thing. I say that, and you're sitting out there, folks. You you know what? You know, I... Let me start over again. Yeah, I'm Tom Young. I own First Consultants in Beaver, and my whole mission in life is to help people find their way to where we all want to go. I, I, I know how you're feeling, folks. You know, I, I, you want money to pay for the kids' college. You, you, you want money for retirement. You, you, you want to be able to save more. I mean, Eddie, you know what these are? When I ask people face-to-face, these are the answers they give me. Here's what Help I me want. save more money. Right. Help me to be able to take care of some of my kids' college. Help me to plan for my retirement. Okay. Help me to get out of debt. The, yeah. Those are the four biggest questions that, that are out there that people ask. Now, folks, remember, share my show. Share, share me. Share my show. Send me an email, and I will send you a gift. I will send you a copy of my new book that is now in print. I was going to say, okay, life insurance, will it pay when I die? You right. know, the family money farm is there, but I'll send you this book because in it is Chapter 8, The Secret of All Secrets About Opportunity Cost. Because when you spend a dollar or lose a dollar, unknowingly, unnecessarily, unthinkingly, however, you just lost the dollar, but didn't you lose the earnings or the interest it would have earned for your entire lifetime, Eddie? It sounds too the, simple. I, I want to say yes, but I'm thinking, no, there's, there's got to be more to the equation that I want to You know, when, when I do the math with people that come to see me, when I do the math, we, we work it out, and, and, and over an average person's lifetime. Now, here, here's a story. I have a little book that I teach young people through my Foundation of Young Entrepreneurs of Tomorrow called Chump Change. And, and there are two things in that book. One talks about automobile loans. You were going to say something. I, I was going to say, do you have a book available for me to give to my daughter? Absolutely. She's, yeah, one, I, she's I, one of the great, well, it's only $3. She gets it from a mother, of course, but, well, it's only $3. <clears throat> it's only $7. It's only $14. It's only a car. You know, it's exhausting. Here you are. You just graduated college. Right. You get your first job making more money than you ever knew existed right. all of a sudden. You, you ain't making much, but to you it's a... It's 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 a fortune. Absolutely. So the first thing you need is you need transportation. So you figure, I'm going to go buy a new car. Mm -hmm. Now, modest. $25,000 is an average car today. Okay. Okay, You finance it for 60 months at 8% interest. Okay. Okay. Your monthly payment is $506 a month. I don't have the numbers in front of me today. But, but. Oh, over that 60 months, that five years, mm-hmm. you're going to spend $5,280 in interest on that car. Just now, to make payments Just on. to make, yeah, it's the interest that the bank charges. You pay 25 for the car, 
and you paid $5,280 $5, in interest on that car. And processing and handling and, fees. And, and now you buy another car and you do the same thing. You buy another car, you do the same, and you do that 10 times between now and retirement. Okay? Okay. At retirement, that $5,200, if it were invested at the same 8% you paid on the loan, right? you'd have $270,000 for the first car, Eddie. The, 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 the first people, car. Why don't people do that? Do they not because nobody, that? because I don't believe nobody is, is, is overshadowing the marketing and the advertising of the financial world. You, you realize we are all programmed We're to, th to think, to we, we are taught to think what they tell us to think. Mm -hmm. Very few people are in this and taught how to think. Here, here's a comment. I was just reading an article recently about the Fabian Society. Okay. Never heard of that. No. Well, you know what that is? That is the underlying school system in America that has existed for decades. And it's about turning our young people into socialists. This is true. This is, I can send you this article, okay. and it's by an economist, an Austrian, a professor of economics, Austrian School of Economics, Robert Murphy, mm -hmm. and, and it's called the Fabian Society. Do some research, okay. and you're going to find that all of this stuff going on across America, these young people have been programmed and prepared to be who are, they are becoming right now. They have been educated to rebel. They, they, they have been educated to do what's right. happening in America. It, 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 <laughs> by the teachers. Because it's the underlying methods of teaching that is happening where people, young people, aren't taught how to think about things today. They're taught rote memorization and told what to think. And, 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 and that's all I'm going to say I, because, it's, you know, it's, this is going to open a whole yeah. can of worms. Oh, no, You're going to have a can of worms today, Eddie. I'm that's leaving right. you a gift. That's, but but you, you want to do some research about the Fabian, the Fabian Society. All right, I wrote it down. I want to do some Fabian research. Fabian Society. <laughs> because, if folks, you know, uh, your list is, well, I know you, I'm not paying a lot of attention minute, to you, but I'm we, live here on my own Facebook. Yes, Eddie. How are we turning kids into socialists through full-blown capitalistic means trying to get them to buy cars and stuff. That's where I got lost. Well, well the thing is, though, if, like if you're a conservative, if you're a conservative and you've been invited to speak right. at the University of California, would you go? If you've been invited to speak and you believe enough in your message, in cons you being a conservative, you better wear a flak jacket and no. take some some armed guards with you, well, because well. colleges have the the young people in colleges okay. are no longer listening. You know, there was a time when you and I were younger, Eddie, mm -hmm. when the liberals and the conservatives in government they got together, they talked, and they come up with compromises, and that's what brought us to the success that America is. Right. But we have now entered an area where everything is, I'm not going to compromise. You either do it my way or else I'm going to burn your building down. Cancel culture. Uh, uh, you know, so we, we are there right now. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what I'm teaching people, right. and, and I'm not predicting the collapse of America. I don't believe that will ever happen, but I believe there are some tough times coming. Okay. And you better be in control of your money. Remember, I started with my four roles of financial mastery. Mm -hmm. Okay, save 20% of your income. Right. And, and I'm going to talk about how to get there today. My Facebook ad this week at noon, I'm on Facebook Live mm -hmm. at noon today. Uh, and every day this week, we're going through the intricate details of how can I save 20% of my income without losing my lifestyle. Is it easier than what my brain just did? Yes, it is. When you say you it, save 20%, it, it, I started it, 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 stuff off. It, it doesn't right. happen on the next paycheck. I got you. It is a process, but it is a painless process, but it takes discipline. It, now, well, is it painless because you do it incrementally? It's not just absolutely. Like you uh, that's correct. That's okay. correct. That's what we're going to talk about. Now, okay. I, I see the time, so we need to take a break. So we're going to take a break, come back, and then I'll wrap, we'll, we'll do a minute or two before the news and set it up for the next half. We don't have time for that. We're going to go straight to the news, and we're going to get right back to you because i got more questions. So, okay? Cool. Absolutely, man. Tom Young, First Consultants, is my guest. It's Beaver County Radio. News is next. It's hard to even put a title on what Tom Young at First Consultants.
No way, dude. I skipped. Hang on. I skipped the first break because you were going. Uh, that was uh, I, I told you I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll today. I see my daughter is watching. Hi, Sarah. Matt Rust is out there. Nice to see you guys. It, it, it is really, this information is so important to make known. Uh, people need to get control of their money and who they are and, and, and stop this, stop being influenced by this stuff going on around us because that's exactly what it does. It is creating influence. Influence is what determines our future. And, and we have to be aware of the things that influence us to block it. You know, I always refer to negative people as SNIOPs, significant negative influence of other people. You, you need to keep that in your mind and you need to avoid dream stealers, people that attack in one way or another and they will steal your dream. I'm going to take a break. The news is going to come on and, and, and I've got to be quiet for a while. So we'll be back in shortly. The best of Beaver County is presented by St. Tom did it. Tom did it. the show on the WBP WNBA Facebook page, plus the radio broadcast will be played each week from 11 to noon on Sundays on Beaver County Radio. It's your chance to encounter the And I'm just getting warmed up, Eddie. The more you go, that's way more interesting to hear you than listening to me. All right, go ahead. Visit yeah. Beaver County yeah. Radio.com yeah. slash the best of Beaver County. All right, can you do news in a minute and 15? All right, because I can buy you another minute and screwed you by about 45 seconds. Put your mind at ease. your visiting nurses professional services. Talking out loud for money. That's all it is. I just I looked up one second and it was still fine. And then I looked up again and that's the screen. And that's not the screen that usually... From the legendary 45 seconds. WBVP to 1460 WBVA on 99.3 FM. And now oh, online you got your stuff already anywhere in, in the world. At LeeCountyRadio.com. Right. Right. Sound or no? The week. Yes. The biggest um, thing that they say that you can do Sandy is wash Sandy your hands. Live in Beaver County, one. but work in an office Sandy in Pittsburgh. Sandy One, Levine One. Got it. BeaverCountyRadio.com. This is Jim Roddy and welcome. I'm trying to find a better place to put you so you see me better. I don't know. You want another, you want another spot? Yes. Listen to Beaver County Radio anywhere, anytime at beavercountyradio.com. Oh, seriously? I'm just going to have to play the promo I just played. But then also... I messed up their show. I was too interesting. I forgot to go to the break. So we've got to make up some time now. They change stuff like every other day on the All right. Jim Roddy and welcome to the best of Beaver County. On vacation and want to know what's happening at home? You ready? Beaver County Radio. So. Family on a steak, but want to slice at home? Beaver County Radio.com. Listen to Beaver County Radio. Right. See where I have your cursor? Yeah, go live. Type in, yeah, so type in Tom Young. All right. 915. Then you can hit the go live. Tom Young, 915. 915. All right, and. And good morning. We are currently at 51 degrees in Beaver County on our way up to 75 degrees today. We'll have a complete look at the Beaver County radio weather forecast after we have this look at news. And Governor Tom Wolf's administration says it will appeal a federal judge's ruling that pandemic restrictions that require people to stay at home place limits on gatherings and order non-life-sustaining businesses to close are unconstitutional. U.S. District Judge William Stickman, the fourth and appointee of President Donald Trump, sided with the plaintiffs that included hair salons, drive-in movie theaters, a 
farmer's market vendor, a horse trainer, and several Republican office holders. Courts had consistently rejected challenges to Wolf's power to order businesses to close during the pandemic. Wolf's spokesman said Monday that the administration will likely seek delayed enforcement of the ruling while it appear, appeals. And the Hopewell School Board met via Zoom last night. Sandy Giordano filed this report. Okay, her video is back up and running there, right now. I don't know what... That screen something made there. it peak. Uh -huh. Something made it peak. That's the only thing I can think of. Because other than that, it should have... But that was a different screen, wasn't it? It still kicked off. It usually... You just... It went longer than it normally does. Oh. When you're on Facebook, I try to keep it like right by the radio. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tom got all wound up. Is that what happened? You get one on I'm hot. I'm, up, I'm on fire today. Levine won. It's our next one. And Beaver County Radio News time is 932. During a press conference yesterday, Dr. Rachel Levine called on all college students for their help. For college and university students. Right. Is that any more? Nope. MRS, MRS. Uh, go into weather. Well, MRS in the weather. Right, right. Hey, the Steelers played all is well with the planet. They, they did? I, uh, you know how I knew? I was seeing people post about they're not going to watch it. I'm like, dude, you might as well. You're using the same time. Yeah. But yeah, they won, and James Conner Connor got hurt, so apparently we're back to old times. They're shocked. Only reason I knew what they did is because I'm responsible for our website, so I had to post it. Yeah. <laughs> they play. Oh, no, I don't give a crap. Honest to God, since I stopped having to cover pro football, I bet you I have not watched an entire pro football game in another year. There's no way in hell I was staying up to watch that. It got over fairly early. I think it got over before 11. It started at 7 o'clock. Well, that's, a, that's a good idea. Here we go. And our newscast this hour is being brought to you by MRS Physical Therapy. We'll check the Beaver County Radio weather right after this. Yeah, it, it's kind of, you know. When, when they came out with the Antoine Rose on their helmets yesterday afternoon, the whole team, I was like, yeah, you definitely stuck a fork in it for me at that point. <laughs> I have no interest in him anymore. I nope. lost, lost all my interest in sports. I'm a NASCAR guy, so I'm open. So that's what I watch. Tour de France is happening right now. Yeah, I'm sticking all I'll stick with NASCAR. That's my favorite sporting event on the planet. The Tour de France. Riding a bicycle. Yep. I know. Five thousand dollar bicycles, ten thousand dollar bicycles. Twelve grand. Between those bikes, between eleven and fourteen, those bikes have hydraulic disc brakes and electronic shifting. <laughs> and you walk into a shop and buy that exact one. If you and guys do. Stand by for Sonder. Whoops. And the Beaver County forecast for today is calling for mostly sunny skies, a high of 75. Tomorrow, also mostly sunny with a high of 82. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a high of 73. And Friday, partly cloudy with a high of 67. We are currently at 52 degrees in Beaver County. That is a look at the news for now. Our next newscast is coming up at the top of the hour, 10.05. I'm Frank Sparks, Beaver County Radio News, 1230 WBVP. 1460 WNBA 99.3 FM presented by St. Barnabas and streaming live around the world at BeaverCountyRadio.com. Thank you, sir. You got it. Appreciate it. Don't think we aren't going to talk NASCAR before the show's over. All Just right. Go ahead and get wound up. Right now, wound up. Tom Young of First Consultants is my guest. Before we had to go to news, we had all sorts of conversations going on. But what the general overview is... And it sounds like, and I'm not bright, so if I get this wrong, you'll tell me I'm wrong. I know that. It sounds like pay attention and look out for yourself rather than letting other people who claim to look out for you 
look out for themselves with the banks. Am I oversimplifying? No, 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 you're not, Eddie. And you know, I, there, there, there are. It's, today is the, the the four question rule. You know, the four we talked about the four rules of the financial world. Right. I want all your money, more on gone, keep forever, give back as little as possible. Okay. What what place did like those. what place does people put money, Eddie, that fits those four rules exactly? Uh, One of the biggest places in America where people save money. Your 401k at work. Oh. I want all your money because they promote you. Put all you can in your 401k. Right. It, it's going to be there forever. It's going to be there forever. And when you go to retire, you're going to take it big out and big. You're going to take it out in little dribs and drabs. So it's going to be there forever. Yeah. Okay. And and then the government under the Secure Act just changed the rules. If your son or daughter inherited your IRA under the old law, they could stretch it over their lifetime and have income over their lifetime with your IRA right. that you didn't spend if, if and, and do something with it to create more wealth for their future. Right. But now the new law says they got to spend it all in 10 years and pay all the tax at their tax rate. Well, that's convenient, isn't it? Well, well, well think about it, Eddie. If, 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 if Dad had a, hundred, had a million dollar IRA or a million dollar pension plan and he died, well, that means you've got to take a hundred grand a year in income. What would that do to your taxes, Eddie? And yeah, you're going to pay taxes. On tax top of your current income. Right. Uh, <laughs> and that's taxed at a different rate, too, that, isn't it? That, that's exactly right. So now let's, let's talk about four rules. My four rules are simple. You got to get to a place where you're saving twenty percent of your income, and and that's up to two hundred thousand. If you make three hundred thousand of income, it's thirty percent. If you make four hundred thousand of income, you got to get to forty percent savings. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to maintain your lifestyle at some future date. Now we'll talk about that and come back to that. I'd love but to but have that save twenty percent. Number two, fifty percent of your gross annual income in accessible cash. So you can get at it without fees, penalties, or taxes. What's accessible cash? Just well, could, it could be account? it could be savings account, could be a bank account, could be money sitting in a checking account, could be cash value sitting in a dividend paying mutual life insurance policy, which nobody knows about because they're only available in less than one percent of the entire insurance marketplace. And when you own one of these policies, you're called? an owner of the company. What's it called? Dividend-paying mutual life insurance policy. Right. It's whole life insurance with a dividend-paying mutual company that is owned by the policyholders. 99% of all the other life insurance out there are corporations that have stockholders. So how do you think they operate, Eddie? Do they operate in your interest or in the stockholders' interest? I don't ever remember insurance or anything operating in my interest. No, 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 think of what you just said. I don't ever remember. I don't See, ever you, remember that. This is so hidden from people that only rich people, banks, and corporations use these policies to store capital in. Banks, it's called BOLI. Google it, folks. B O L I, bank owned life insurance. Huntington Bank in Beaver, okay, that's a big bank in here locally. Right. Their, their tier one money, their core reserve, is $3.92 billion. 40% of that, fact, 40% of that is in cash value, life insurance of what we're talking about. So it's 40%. Good for 40% of well, that the money. Well, the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve tells their member banks mm -hmm. that this product has the lowest risk of default. Now, if you're looking at the government, looking at the future, right. where do you want to store money, Eddie? I want to be able to know that it's going to be there and not get disappeared. And, and, and these companies are all well over 100 years old, so they aren't new companies. And there's only a few of them left, and they are buried by the advertising of the corporate, corporate insurance companies. So, you, so your chance of finding out what I'm telling you, that this, this is... This is it, folks. This is the secret of all secrets because you have been brainwashed to think that life insurance, you only buy what you need. That was the way I was trained 44 years ago to convince you you need it so you'll give me money to pay for it. I show people how to pay for it with no additional out-of-pocket cost, simply by learning how to evolve it into their financial plan into their work that they're doing, the financial work they're doing. It's just a piece of the puzzle that fits in and doesn't cost you anything. Do, do what I said, folks. It doesn't cost you anything if it's done correctly. 
Well, that's my next question. How? Here I am, folks. Tom Young, first consultant, 724-728-6820. I'll make you two promises right here, right now. Okay, if there's anybody out there that can disprove what I'm telling you today, I will pay you $1,000 in cash. Think about that, folks. I've been doing this since 1985 with Chris Shovlin on the old Teleform show. Yeah. How many years ago was that, Eddie? Uh, 35 awesome. years <laughs> ago. I, and, and that $1,000 reward has never, nobody has ever attempted it. That's called putting your money where your mouth is. I, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So I'm here with a mission in my life to, to share this information with a million or more people before I die. So, so this is crazy. Now, rule number three, no consumer debt. You become the bank in your house. Okay. You know, my daughter just purchased a car. Where did she borrow the money? Mom and dad, they pay us interest. So when the money what, gets what paid back. What interest are you charging your daughter? Huh? What interest are Six you charging? Six percent. Six percent. Okay. Six percent. Better so, than so, the bank. So, so there it is, and, yeah. and guess what? When when mom and I are gone, who in, who inherits the bank, Eddie? No doubt. Who who inherits the bank? That's Do you want to inherit bank. mom and dad's bank? If you're, it's, you're paying on your own account. It's how to create millions of dollars in a lifetime by simply learning how to manage the money better and, do, and taking control of it. You know, take the control away from the financial world. I'm not. I'm not saying they're bad people, Eddie. They're just in business to make money. They do what they do. And, and aren't you in business to make money? Don't you want to have the most retirement income you can have when you get there? Oh my God! Yeah. Absolutely. Now the fourth rule is the CFO mastery project. Okay. You know that's the real challenge. Is is the mastery? So now you you reach a mastery level, you understand all this stuff, and you take the responsibility of teaching it to your children and your children's children. And now you learn and attempt to capture all the economic human life value of everybody in the household. What do you, economic human life value, what's that, Tom? Well, you've heard, we've all heard the saying, when you die, you can't take it with you. Hearses don't have trailers. Uh, that, that's exactly right. Yeah. However, everybody takes this with the many. They take their economic human life value with them to the grave because they weren't insured. Your house, you have insurance on your home right. that if your house burned down, it's replacement cost coverage, right? Yeah. You have an automobile financed at the bank, and they require you to have full coverage insurance yes, yes, to yes. protect their investment in your car. Right. But, but if you had a goose that laid golden eggs... Mm -hmm. Would you insure the goose or the eggs? Uh, I'd like to insure both, but if I've got the means of production, then I'm going to hang I'm going to insure the goose. That's well, right. we are all the gooses of our households. We earn money in the life insurance industry. They have a formula that determines your economic human life value. Is that a number and, and that you can figure out? And absolutely, look at absolutely. Do you want? Is that a zero through ten scale, or is that a? Well, here's an example. At forty, amount? at forty years old, if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year in income, okay. your your multiplier by the insurance industry standards would be somewhere around twenty times. So you should have life insurance equal to $2 million. Okay. Now, now, on young couples with families, I do this, and we do a lot of term insurance. The, the whole life insurance portion becomes part of the savings, and it grows over time. But, but people need to be insured properly. Here, here's a story, Eddie. Guy and his wife, he's, he's in his 40s, he's got a wife, he's got three kids, they live in a nice house, a nice neighborhood, he has a great job as an executive of XYZ Corporation, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of a sudden, in the morning, the wife got up, and she reached over, he's gone, he's not in bed. Uh -huh. and, and she got up and starts looking around, and in his closet, a bunch of his clothes are gone. Uh -huh. Car's gone out of the driveway. Yeah. The, he cleaned the bank accounts out, and he left. Secretary come into this story? Uh, well, hey, yeah, probably. Yeah, but, okay. but here's a question, Eddie. What term would you use to refer to this gentleman? Oh, I can't say that on the air. Uh, that's exactly yeah. right. And those are the that, terms that is that exactly right. Yeah. That exact. Now let me change the story. Okay. 
Okay. Same guy, yeah. 40 years old, wife, three kids, great job, uh, same thing, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and yesterday, he stopped and had a few drinks on the way home, crashed the car, and ki got killed. Okay. Yesterday on the way home. He still had no money, no life insurance, and left the family with nothing. Okay. What would you call him? Um... Similar, wouldn't it? It yeah. wouldn't be. It wouldn't be as harsh. It might be as harsh. Ah, for different the, reasons. The the point is, is people are not being educated properly about their finances. Here, I'm gonna, I want to share something. And I brought this with me. And and when we talk about typical planning, right? It's give me a number. How much do you need when you retire? And here's the, we're going to assume an interest rate. Mm -hmm. We're going to assume what your taxes are, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to assume what inflation is. And then we're going to start this journey towards retirement. Now, that describes 90% of everybody that's got a plan that they're working on for retirement. It but, describes what I should be doing, but uh, I'm not doing. Right. So. That's right. Now, what are the things that, that change along the way, all these assumptions? Mm -hmm. Well, inflation. Tell me what inflation really is, or do you really believe the government? When the banks are, qualif are, are creating $7, this $6, 7000000000000 trillion the Federal Reserve has printed up and has on their balance sheet, your your dollar is 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 worth diddly squat right now, and all the only thing that is protecting it is because everything is under the lid of the pressure cooker right now. Mm -hmm. But eventually, that money is going to show up in society, and and it's going to devalue all your money. That's what inflation. There are five elements: risk, taxes, regulations, mm -hmm. inflation, and depreciation of the dollar. Those are the five things. Every decision you make about your money has to be qualified, is it fixing any of those five things? Is depreciation of the dollar always due to inflation? No. Inflation and depreciation it's of the dollar are two, two different things. things. Okay. Because we live in a world economy. Other countries, their dollar, their their monetary unit, okay, is Good. different valued than ours. So how much of everything you consume every day is imported into the country? Most of it. Uh, okay, so Most so 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 the the dollars are depreciated based on these agreements that the governments make between each other. So there is a depreciation of the dollar, devaluing of the dollar. We're willing in to addition to dollar, inflation. We're willing to let our dollar mean a little bit less to that other country. Absolutely. To get the deal that that other country's uh, business. Uh, absolutely. Is back. That's you got it, Eddie. Okay. You got it. No, okay. Don't say that. I'm scribbling. This is like college. I'm over here scribbling notes of everything. Keep going. <laughs> Okay, tell me what the rate of return is going to be. Uh, you, you, you know, here, here's, here's, a, here's a quick story with the government debt. In 2007, okay. the, the attested to debt of the federal government was about $8 trillion. The 10-year treasury was 6%, and that has always been related to as the benchmark. The 10-year treasury note is the benchmark. So 6% on $8 trillion is $480 billion. So the interest in 2008 was about $480 billion the government paid on the debt. Right. So know. here we are now at $26 trillion. Okay. $26 trillion, three times. Three times. Triple. And the interest rate is just under 2. So two, just under 2. 2% 2 of $26 trillion is what? Five hundred and twenty billion. Sure. So, so if you think about the controlling factor here, what Nelson taught me twenty years ago, Nelson Nash in the Infinite Banking, okay. he said, Tom, it's not the interest rate that they're charging or paying; it's the volume of interest you pay. Now, think about that. What I just said: the volume of interest in two thousand and eight was four hundred and eighty billion. Mm -hmm. The volume of interest today on twenty six trillion isn't a lot more. Because the Treasury, the 10-year Treasury the other day, the yield was 0.7. Okay. 0.7. Less than 1%. So, so is, is this the government or is this controlling the interest on the debt? You Tell me what it is. Because none of the politicians ever talk about the debt. They are the most irresponsible people in the world. Well, they, they are, they are unaccountable. Debt. There is no accountability for any of this stuff. They talk about the debt when the other side's in charge and they complain uh, about well, it. It's they exactly talk about right. the debt as a problem. Uh, that's exactly right. Right. That's, that's exactly right. You know, so now they're, they're talking about how much Trump has run up the debt. Mm -hmm. Well, who's control, who controls the money? 
when, when it's paying the bills. It's Congress. Who's in charge of Congress right now? It's the Democrats. Now, I'm sorry, folks. I'm not going off in politics. But, but you know, everybody is accusing everybody of whatever. But I did, a, I did a dissertation a week ago about the politicians that have been there for 20, 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're all career politicians. Well, they're the people that have run up the unfunded liability to $153 trillion. It's more than a million one hundred thousand per taxpayer, and the twenty six trillion is two hundred and sixteen thousand. So it's a million three, folks. You, the mortgage that our politicians have laid on our children and grandchildren is a million three. Per you person. want me to do the math? What would the monthly payment be? A million three. A million three, Eddie. What uh, would the well, monthly payment is, be? Is it a five year loan like getting a Buick? Well, think of a, a let's say you got a mortgage for one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Wouldn't your principal and interest payment be about nine hundred? Sure. Okay. Take that times ten. No. <laughs> so that would be your so monthly mortgage that's payment, that's what, nine thousand a month. That's what so my this is where we're at, me. folks. And, and until we man up, woman up, and decide to start allowing things to work properly, we're we're on a crash course. We're, we're on a highway, and the bridge is out somewhere in the future. There is no bridge. What do you do? If you're convinced that that's the case, I I wake up tomorrow and I well, think, well, okay, Eddie, I'm convinced let me, this world save twenty percent of your income, get right. control of your money, learn yeah. how to think differently. When you think differently, you'll see things differently. What do I do? Learn how money? to measure properly when you make financial decisions. Learn how, to, and that's what I'm talking about here. When I talked about inflation, you know, what's the real inflation number? Mm-hmm. Uh, rate of return is the net going to constantly change? You're sitting here making a projection for the next twenty. 30 years for your retirement, thinking you're going to make 5, 6, 7, 8 percent, and, and the 10 year treasury is 0. 0.7. Yeah. And, and can the government allow the interest rates to go up very much? I don't think so. Tax law changes. How, how about that? Is that going to affect you saving money for the future? Yeah, one tax law can change an entire planned out grid. Right? How about technological change? Yeah. When was the last time you bought something to replace something you had that wasn't broke yet? Technology. I, I make an effort not to do that, but we all do that. Planned obsolescence. Oh, yeah. Everything that is manufactured has a lifespan and will wear out. By design of the engineer, I always joke with my engineer clients, they, they got their final degree mm-hmm. when, when they produced a product that it, it dis- expired within 30 days after the warranty run out. They got it dialed in. They, they, exactly absolutely. Right. Okay. Yeah. So how about functional obsolescence? Yeah, You know, you're going to wear things out. Things are just going to wear out. Needs always move. So tell me, are your needs today the same as they were 10 or 15, 20 years ago, Eddie? No. No. So tell me what your needs are going to be 20 years from now in the future. Well, can I at least bank on it being better? Because my needs now are far less than they were 20 years ago. So all of that leads me, that leads me to one answer. Okay. Typical planning... They set a target to shoot for like a goal. I need X number of dollars, and nobody knows what that is, although the financial planner, and I have all these initials after my name, folks, I have taken all the courses. And what they do is, well, we're going to take your income today, and we're going to assume 30 years inflation average, and we're going to project your income from today into the future. Even though today may not be your ideal dreamed about income, we're going to use today's income to project what you're going to get at retirement. And then you're looking at me, we need to take a break, I guess. No, we can keep going. Oh, okay. We'll just go to the top of the hour. I ain't stopping. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm going crazy here. No, that's but, right. but it, it, it just... So so it brings me down to the answer of the financial mastery blueprint. So the goal is to have the most I can have at any date in the future. Wouldn't you agree that that would be a better deal? More money. The, more money. The yeah, most I yeah. can have. Now, now let's come back to today. Now, how do I make that happen, Eddie? It's by learning efficiencies of money, by okay. learning how to control my money today, to stay in control of my money and use it to the maximum efficiency. Stop losing money through debt and credit cards by taking control of it. It's just a discipline. 
This stuff is not hard. It just takes discipline what I teach people. And and the things that I hear from people that have been clients for 10 or 15 years, Mm -hmm. and and then I meet new people and they say, oh my, Tom, I wish I'd have met you 20 years ago. Well, I'm sorry, I don't have a time machine. We cannot go back. But I can tell you this, that we can surely make a difference in the end of the game. It's never too late to do something. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Here, let me let me ask you four simple questions. Okay. Okay. Again, what interest you know. rate do you have to earn on your savings, your current long-term savings, in order for you to have enough money when you get to retirement that your money lasts as long as you do throughout your entire life expectancy? What interest rate? I don't know. I have no okay. Idea. How I, much I mean, money? I a number, how, how much money do I have to save mm-hmm. on a daily, monthly, weekly, annual basis every year, every month, from now till I retire, so that I'll have enough money when I get there that will last as long as I need, as as my life expectancy will need that money. How much do I have to save on a regular basis? Don't know. Don't know. Okay. I like well, this. Well, how long? Thing. How long will I have to work? Mm-hmm. Before I will have saved enough money that I can actually quit working and retire, how long will I have to work? I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, how much will you have to reduce your lifestyle when you get there so that it fits the money you saved and the money will last as long as you need it in throughout your lifestyle and last as long as you do? How know. much will you have to reduce your lifestyle? I don't know. You know, I talk to people about the go-go years, the slow-go years, and the no-go years. Yeah. And, and I see we're, we're a couple minutes out. I'm going to wrap it up. Folks, you, you, need, you need to come and spend 45 minutes with me. I'll make you two promises. I'm not going to ask you to buy a thing, and there won't be a second meeting unless you want it. How do people get a hold of you? 724-728-6820. I'm on Facebook every day at noon, the Family Money Farm Group. You need to join that group because the information on there is just going to grow. I've already got 125 podcasts and, and 100 videos on there, so all this information is on there. And it's all there. It's all there, and I will be leave here. I'll be on at noon again today. Are you going to be as wound up today? I, I'm going to be as wound up today and, and, and all along. It just, I, I'm excited that I have been able to find this out in my own life. You know, 30 years ago, I was on the edge of bankruptcy, and, and I made a decision to fix it. With the help of a great businessman named Jody, he took me by the hand and taught me how to be a businessman. So what I had know today, it's been 30 years of painful experience to learn it. That's Tom Young. God bless Eddie. Beaver County Radio. 1230 WBDP, 1460 WMJ, that rock. and 99.3 FM. I, didn't, I literally I broke format to let you keep going because of what you were saying. It's Shining like I ain't, I ain't stopping down. Making on a difference in our it's only going to get hotter, Eddie. It's only going to get hotter and more exciting. I, I'm that was damn interesting. I, I mean, I'm not talking about what you were talking about. I'm talking about the radio geek stuff that I pay attention to as far as interesting to listen to. That kicked ass. The numbers just made my head hurt. I did. There were a couple times I'm listening. I'm like, oh, my God. I remember econ class in college. Wow. Hey, guys. Hey, love you all. Love your comments. And and uh, it, it really great. So catch. I'll be back on at noon today, and we're going to continue the journey talking about the financial mastery blueprint. And and today is going to be how do I save money? How do I get to that fifty percent of my annual income in cash savings? So come back at noon today. We'll talk to you later. God bless. Thank you all so much for your comments.